Hello everyone and welcome back to St Giles Aintree for our worship this morning. We are celebrating Pentecost this morning, uh, so accordingly, according with the gifts of the Spirit given out to uh, lots of different people in this church and the first church, I've asked some people to contribute more than our usual online services, especially our prayers and our readings, so thank you all to them. Uh, also to say well done to our Sunday school as well, who had a shout out on Radio Merseyside last week for all the hard work they've been doing. So thank you very much. Shout out to the girls from the well. Sunday school at St Giles's Church in Aintree. Uh, they do gifts that get delivered to 72 pensioners across Aintree every Sunday. Well done uh, to all those uh, girls in the Sunday school at St Giles's in Aintree. That's great news. So you're doing a great job there. And I'm sure that every single one of those 72 pensioners are really, really appreciating that contact they have with that little gift they receive every Sunday. And Glenis in uh, Croxford, thanks very much for letting us know about that. So you're very welcome as you join us, wherever you are, or whenever, indeed, whenever you join us. But we're just going to begin our service as usual by taking a moment for reflection to gather our hearts and minds to receive God's love and his grace this morning. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were some devout Christians from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Crete, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages we could hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with the new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days. I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood. Therefore the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Through the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. 
It was an evening on a first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Here ends the Gospel of the Lord. Today we meet wherever we are today to celebrate Pentecost, the church's birthday. Now, in the weeks following the disciples' experiences at Easter, they prayed together and the result has been a gradual growth in wisdom and understanding and a deepening sense of peace and joy. God was at work in them and through them, bringing a work long time coming to fruition. We hear this morning the story of that momentous morning. We see in our gospel, or rather we hear, the moment of transformation for those who'd been gathered in that upper room with Jesus at the Last Supper and all that has followed on from that. At Pentecost, the certainty returns to the disciples of all that they've witnessed. That death had not overcome Jesus, but instead it hardens into a reality. And that releases in them an outpouring of joy. And speaking about good news starts to come naturally to them. Jesus also talked in our Gospel reading about those great works, about giving them the Holy Spirit, the Helper, that will assist them in all that they do in his name. Now we can run the danger about forgetting the message of Pentecost. We can spend too long looking back on what our forerunners in faith saw as God's power. That's not to dismiss our history, but our history is a rich resource, but only if it prompts us to use it as a springboard. And the virtue of celebrating Pentecost each year is to have the opportunity again and again to listen to God's direction for his people afresh, especially here in our own churches. And so we continue to seek the Holy Spirit in the witness that we show together as a church. And the promise of Pentecost is that God's work still continues with the spirit that he has given us. At our birth, confirmed in our baptisms, renewed at our confirmations, we continually discover throughout our lives even here, even today, even now. When we act for others, seeking to model the love of God, we are being the work of the Holy Spirit and part of God's mighty deeds for someone, however insignificant it might seem to us at the time. And even if we aren't in the best place to act, our actions, our words can speak of God, the good news. From such small seeds grow to be noticed by others. And the deeds of God we know to be worthwhile, compassion for the poor, the outcast, the refugee, the love of our neighbour, should be done courageously and confidently. It is said in the Gospel that the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. What an encouragement then for each of us as we seek to live out our Christian faith in the places where we are. There's an Archbishop, John Tillotson, who lived in 1691, and he once said that the soul of humanity is an active principle, an active thing, and will be employed in one way or another. Either way, it will be doing something. For the apostles at Pentecost, they were compelled into doing something. The active part of their soul, the bit that shows the love of God, the bit that has the thumbprint of God on the inside them, became aligned with the energy of God that was overflowing in love towards his world and towards his people. 
and they were able to proclaim the gospel as crowds gathered in all their different languages, to their surprise as well as the crowds, I suspect. And so the story of Pentecost really should become our earworm. Where do you come into contact, I wonder, with the energy of God? How do we show God's love to people in all of the myriad places that we come into contact with them? Where is, in my life, in my actions, a Holy Spirit that encourages, equips and prompts us both inside and outside our church buildings? And so let me finish by summing it up like this. The spirit of Pentecost continues to dwell within us and prompts us to continue the work of God wherever and whoever we are. The story of Pentecost should be like our earworm that reminds us that the Holy Spirit working in ourselves and in our fellow Christians results in the continual fulfilment of Christ's promise to his disciples that we will continue to do extraordinary things even in these extraordinary times. We need to pray for each other, to support each other, and to keep encouraging and listening to each other as to how to do those extraordinary things. So just a thought to leave with you. Amen. Come Spirit of God, sweep through our world, bringing great change. May the bounty of your goodness be shared more justly so all may share in the rich blessings of your world and for us bring transformation in our praying and living so that we may act justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you all the days of our lives. Open our eyes to see the presence of God all around us in the stillness of sacred space, in the busyness and noise of our city streets, in the joys and struggles celebrations of our lives for life in its fullness we pray amen dear lord as we join to worship you from our homes we give you thanks for the fellowship of our church again we ask you to stir up the holy spirit in the heart of your faithful people and renew us in your service in your name we pray amen holy god we pray for our church leaders, chaplaincies and ministers, ordained and lay, that they will be guided in their ministry, the Holy Spirit, and that the church may speak and show the gospel to people of every race, language and culture. We pray that each of us will be open to the opportunities to give of our individual talents, enabling each congregation to flourish as a witness to the one body of the church. We pray that each baptised Christian may develop more fully in response to the gifts which your Spirit bestows on them for the service and the body of Christ. For your Spirit we pray. Amen. Loving God, we pray for all those who are sick. Guide them and strengthen them through their illness. We pray also for those who care for the sick, those engaged in the caring professions and for family members who look after loved ones and especially for children who care for parents. We also pray for all those who have died that a place at the feast may be theirs in your presence. May all who are departed be at peace and peace be with those who miss them. To those we love, on them we pray. Amen. by magic. I'm joined by the very new vicar of the Good Shepherd West Derby, so thank you for coming along again, Pat. You're very welcome. Uh, yeah, and we'll look forward to seeing you all in person as soon as we can. And if you notice, uh, we've had other uh, items appearing around our church during these services, so keep an eye out for uh, what's appeared behind us. These are to represent people of every tribe, every nation, every tongue who come to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, as we do around this table. So let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
And now we give you thanks that after he had ascended far above all heavens and was seated at the right hand of your majesty, he has sent forth upon the universal church your holy and life-giving spirit, that through his glorious power the joy of the everlasting gospel might go forth into all the world. And so now we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died at supper with his friends, he took bread, he praised you, he gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took a cup of wine, Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new promise, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. So, Lord of all life, would you help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, so justice and mercy may be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St Giles, St Peter and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Believing in the promises of God, we pray with confidence as he himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread. To share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Body of Christ, keep you in eternal peace. Shed for you. And a final blessing for you all to send you out into this week, full of the Holy Spirit, and may that Spirit rest upon you. May the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep your hearts and your mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Rest upon you, upon those you love, and upon all those who you pray for, this day and always. Amen. <laughs>